In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to attend graduate school in the United States for free while getting paid in the process. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Rarasu Amaribi and I film about education and lifestyle from Tampa, Florida. So just a brief background, I am currently a PhD student at the University of South Florida, fully funded, that is I get all my tuition waived and I get paid stipends to take care of my living expenses. I know a lot of people out there would love to gain an advanced degree, but because of the cost associated with it, they become discouraged. If this sounds like you, then you should definitely watch this video till the end. So there are several ways to get college funding in the United States from graduate assistantship to teaching or research assistantship to scholarship or even fellowship. However, the most common way to get your tuition waived and get paid stipend is through any form of the assistantship. So as a teaching assistant, you assist the professor um, in a course it takes by helping grade or supervise students and sometimes lecture. Uh, as a research assistant, you work under a professor on a research project. And so as either a teaching or a research assistant, your department gets to waive your tuition and pays you um, stipends for working as an assistant. The only fees you have to pay are the um, associated college fees which your stipend can conveniently cover. So how exactly can you get this assistantship? You basically have to look for a school um, and apply there. So some schools fund everyone that gets admitted, um, but that's basically or most commonly for PhD programs, while other schools only give funding to those students they deem qualified enough. So the trick here is to look for schools that um, fund their students regularly and um, try to apply and get admitted in those schools. So you cannot just apply and expect to get admitted. You have to get your application process right. So I'm going to be telling you all you need to actually apply correctly to schools in the United States. First, you should start browsing the internet for universities in the United States offering courses that you're interested in. Go to your interested departments page on the university's website to have an idea of the research that's being conducted. This will help give you a feel of areas you like to specialize in when you actually attend graduate school. I think this step is very important and should be done continuously up until you actually get admitted into a school. Now, for the application itself, you will need to get the following ready. Your diary, TOEFL, your resume, your transcript, your letter of recommendation, and your statement of purpose. So, diary is a standardized test that tests you on verbal reasoning and quantitative, and it also has the writing section. So, now, some schools tend to waive diary, but my advice is you actually just write your diary and get it done with because you're not going to be applying to only one or two schools. You're going to be applying to a lot of schools based on um, how much application fees you can pay, but like from five and above. And even if one school is waiving diary, the other school may not waive. So it's just um, easier and it um, guarantees you more opportunity for funding if you can just prepare for your GRE, get it done and get the best score um, you can get in your GRE. For me, I, I came for my master's first before I actually started my PhD and um, I was not funded from the beginning. I had to pay my first semester school fees myself and after that I got this fellowship and a scholarship. Um, and when applying for those um, scholarship. I was actually asked for my GRE score, so I believe writing GRE also helped me to secure those funding. So um, it's better you just prepare once and for all for the exam and write it. You can go to the official website ets.org to um, learn about the generals of the of the exam and start preparing for them. Um, I would leave 
links to some free materials for Jari down in the description box. Everything, um, all resources for this video, free resources, I'll leave the link um, in there in the description box so you can check to find um, whatever resources I, I didn't fit for this video down there. So yeah, prepare for your Jari. I cannot tell you a score that's good for Jari because um, it differs based on your school, department, your discipline. But try your best and even when you start like browsing university's website in their requirements section, you get to see like average um, Jari scores of incoming students and so um, with that score, you should know like oh, what range you should be um, targeting in your GRE score. Do not feel bad if you don't get really high. I think there's school for like everyone and um, in this process, they do not look at just one part of your application. They look at it as a whole. That's all of this requirement. They look at it as a whole, but it's best to um, put in your best foot in all of the aspects of the application process so next is TOEFL so for TOEFL is a test of English language and um, it's um, it's normally waived for some countries like Nigeria but it's important to also write it because even if it's waived to get you admitted um, it's needed if you are to be given assistantship it's they need to see that you can um, you have a great command of English in order to be um, a teaching assistant so it's best you just prepare for your GRE write it prepare for your TOEFL write it and get it done so your transcript you need transcript from your previous higher education that's from your bachelor's university or if you've done your master's and you're going for your big degree or master's um, degree university um, you need an unofficial copy to attach when you're actually applying but you need to send an official copy from your school when from your previous school when you actually get admitted to the new school so just keep that in mind and start making preparations to get that from your school then we have the resume you have to create a proper resume i'll leave an acceptable resume format i'll leave the link in the description box so you can check that out um that leaves us to letter of recommendation so they usually require like three letter of recommendation some school will require two but most commonly three and above three to five so this you need from your previous professors professors that know you um, that can attest to your character, your hard work and educational capabilities. Um, if you're already deep in the industry, you can get from your supervisor or manager that can attest to your um, work ethics. So I suggest you get like <laughs> recommendations from um, close professors or lecturers back in your university, like your supervisor uh, or other professors you know um can actually confidently vouch for you you have to approach them and tell them that you're applying to schools and you need letter of recommendations from them uh, most most of the time they don't actually give you the letter you just have when applying you have to provide their email addresses and when when you submit your application prompt gets sent to them and they then send their recommendation letter so it will really help if you can get someone that knows you personally and actually writes good things about you so that leaves us to the statement of purpose the statement of purpose i like to say is like your story the life story like you you have to tell them where you're coming from and where you're going to and how these degree that you are seeking would help you um, achieve your future goals or endeavors so um, you should have a story of what has happened in your life before that has made you interested in this graduate degree 
and how does this graduate degree when to help you to solve that problem that has occurred in your life or um, provide um, solution to your future goals so it has to look up so that's why part of the reason why i said the browsing of um universities that offer your courses is a continuous process so you you get to see research that's being done you might you might just have a big idea of what you want to achieve in life or you might not know everything right now but seeing what people are doing it, it gives you an idea that oh okay I think I want to do this. This can actually help me achieve my future goals. So, like, you should read a lot, read articles, read um, the work being done in universities in your area, in in your area of discipline, and it helps give a better idea of how you want to achieve your goal. You may have you may have a goal, but you don't know how to achieve that goal. So, like. Um, this statement of purpose tells the admission committee that oh okay you know exactly what you want you've done this before and you want to get to this and this is how you want to get to this and the um, degree would actually help you go from point A to B so it has to be a story that links try not to lie like for me statement of purpose has actually helped or when I was creating my statement of purpose, it helped define my story properly. It helped give me direction. And if I look at the first, because I had written multiple statement of purpose, but if I look at the first, I still see like the 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 reasoning or the storyline is still the same because it's actually now my life story. That's what 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 I'm working on continuously every day. So. For me it helped to it helped me search myself to define my story and i'm actually trying to live that story so that's why you need a lot of thinking you need to continuously browse the internet to see um what's being done out there how you can make changes to to um create a better solution to your future goal or to solve a problem in your past so that's it for like all of the requirements for um application into universities and so like i said they look at it as a whole but i would say putting your best foot in all of the process so like when you're looking at schools like i said you would already see the average um incoming jerry um the average jerry scores of incoming students you see the average gpa of incoming students this will help like put you or tell you oh is this school too ambitious for me or do i pass their requirement or do i like meet their requirements so that brings us to um how you choose schools that you act you would actually apply to it's really not bad to have ambitious schools that means schools that you don't meet all of their requirements but you still want to get in there um i'll suggest you apply to like one or two of those schools it's very possible that your statement of purpose might just blow them um blow their minds and they won't worry about your maybe low gpa or low GRE score and accept you but that's why we call it ambitious schools because it's not common that they accept people that don't meet their requirements so i'll suggest you can apply to one or two but if you don't really have the money because you need to pay application fees for all the schools you're applying to if you don't have the money then you should just stay with schools that you meet their requirement and schools that you surpass their requirements these are safe schools that schools that you're sure that you're a, a, a very good applicant applicants surpassing other applicants those are safe schools you, you surpass their average jerry scores surpass, surpass their G, gpa requirements and so you have like a better chance or like yeah a better chance of getting admitted into the school so you apply to schools that you meet their requirements and schools that you surpass their requirements those are safe schools so while applying to, so you just don't look at the requirements and say okay because i surpass the requirement i applied to say, no you look at their funding do they fund um everybody that gets admitted 
So, like I said, for masters, it's not very common that they fund all of the students that get admitted. But if you're going for a PhD program, most schools, as long as you can get admitted, they fund you, they fund all of their PhD students. So if you have the slightest idea that you actually want to do a PhD after your master's, I would suggest that you just apply straight for a PhD. You don't have to, in the United States, you don't have to have a master's degree first before you can go for your PhD. From bachelor's, you can apply straight into a PhD program and when you get into that program, you're basically doing combined master's and PhD. The master's is just a coursework and PhD is your continued research. But like if it's something you know from the beginning that you want to gain your PhD, I suggest applying straight because that even just confirms um, your funding from the beginning. Uh, for master's students, most schools, they, they do not fund everybody. They fund some of them. And so if really that's just what you want to do, then you have to, have to look at like the funding policy for master's students. Get in touch with students in that school to know if they actually fund any master's student. And if they do, you can send message to the administrative staff to know your chances of getting funding in those schools. Um, I want to let you know that this is not like a apply get admitted kind of process. You get a lot of rejections, but if you are blessed or not just blessed, but if you are lucky, you might like get um, admission into the first school you apply and you get full funding. But it's usually like a roller coaster. You get a lot of rejections, then you get admitted. The first um, year I was applying to schools, I got a lot of rejections. I got one admission, but I was not satisfied with the amount of funding they gave to me. So I just left that year alone and I applied the next year. So it's not compulsory that um, you apply now and if you get rejected, that means it's over. No, if you really want it, you do it again and um, you apply to a lot of school, like I said, based on how much application fee you can afford. But if you can really like select proper schools that you know you have like high possibility of entering then you can apply to less and um, hope for the best so that'll be all for now for this video if you have any questions about this application process um, please leave your questions below in the comment section and this is the time to start preparing for Jerry, especially with um, the whole isolation going on COVID-19, a lot of people are not actually going to work. You have a lot of free time. You should start preparing for your jerry right now your, and your TOEFL because um, school's application process or window will open in September. So by September, you can apply for a graduate degree program. And most schools in the United States, you get to apply a year before you actually want to come so if you want to apply september you should be thinking of coming next year for that's 2021 fall so this period you can actually use it to start preparing for your diary then write it and um, start applying to school so most schools open september some really top schools they open september and they close their, their application window december so that's what I'll say you should look at while trying to apply, like prepare towards that window, prepare to write, prepare for your GRE exam, you can write it while the Ember month starts that September, October, but, but be ready to submit your application before December ending. But some other schools um, leave their windows open up until next year, but like a lot of priority deadlines, which um, some schools have like deadlines for people that will want funding. It's usually still early. So my advice is that if you want full funding, you should start preparing for your diary and your TOEFL, write it and apply starting September and like with your plan, try to submit it before December and based on the school, then you can extend it again. So yeah, if you have more questions, please leave in the comment section. And um, if you would like me to do more videos about graduate school in the United States, please let me know. Um, 
if you really love this video and you gained a lot i would like that you leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet and i'll see you in my next video thank you